Okay, so today we will start by proving Cauchy integral formula. Okay, so what does it uh, like? What is Cauchy integral formula? What does it talk about? Okay, so what? So let me let me first uh, give you the statement. So the statement is as follows. So let uh, alpha belongs to some uh, ball B A R and F is holomorphic and F D holomorphic on B A R. So I have a ball where my I have a function which is holomorphic and I take a point from that ball. Okay, so let uh, rho positive be such that uh, the distance between A and alpha is less than rho and rho is less than R. Okay, so you can imagine what I'm saying here. So let's say this is my point alpha or sorry, this is my point A and then let's say I have uh, one ball centered at A like this. And then if I have some alpha somewhere here, then what I'm doing, I'm just taking uh, some row uh, which is uh, slightly bigger than the distance between A and alpha. And what I'll be doing, I'll be considering uh, a, you know, so let me think, can I change the color? How do I change? Yeah, okay, so uh, then what I'm going to do, I'm going to consider a new, uh, another circle, which is of uh, radius rho, okay? And then, so my rho is slightly more than the distance between A and alpha, okay? So this distance is uh, rho, and the whole distance is r. Okay, so uh, that's the picture, and so I have taken a rho like this. Then what I can say, is that then this f alpha can be given in terms of an integral. So what is the integral? Integral is 1 upon 2 pi i a plus gamma rho. So uh, this notation I will use very often. I will uh, tell you what is this a plus gamma rho f of z minus <coughs> f of z divided by z minus alpha. So what is a plus gamma rho? Here a plus gamma rho denote the path, the path of the closed curve, uh, a plus rho e power i theta or e power 2 pi i theta, whatever you want to take, and theta belongs to 0 to 2 pi. Okay, so uh, this is the circle centered at a with radius rho. Okay, so that's the closed curve I am taking. And as I said, I told you that when there is no orientation given, Generally, you will always take the positive orientation. So uh, the orientation is in the anti-clockwise direction. So what am I saying here? I am saying that if you take any point in this uh, open ball where the function is holomorphic, the function value can be uh, given in terms of an integral uh, where the means the uh, circle that you want to take, you can choose it uh, suitably. Okay, so since I am taking, op I am working with open ball. So no matter what point you uh, choose alpha in that open ball, you will always be able to accommodate uh, such a row uh, between R and uh, mod of A minus alpha. And then if you draw the circle uh, centered at A with radius rho, uh, then you will be able to say that f of alpha is one upon two pi i integral from A plus gamma rho. Uh, mean integral over a plus gamma rho f of z divided by z minus alpha. Okay, so that's the Cauchy integral formula that we have. Okay, so uh, let me first give you the proof of Cauchy integral formula and then we will see how we are going to use it. Okay, so the proof is is, is going to be rather easy. Okay, so uh, it will not be difficult at all. So let's see. So proof. So remember the g function that we saw in the last class we are going to utilize that. Okay, so consider the function. Consider the function g of z, which is defined by f of z minus f of alpha divided by z minus alpha if z is not equal to alpha. This is all this I am defining on b a r okay. and f prime at alpha 
if z equal to alpha. So this is defined on so on the uh, Okay, so on this ball, I am defining this function g, okay, which uh, uh, is holomorphic everywhere in B A R, except perhaps the point z equal to alpha, and but nevertheless it is continuous at alpha. Okay, so is is it clear which function we are taking? This is the one which we took in the last class. Remember? Yes, sir. Yeah. Okay, so uh, that's what we have now. And uh, so once I have this, what can we say? We saw in the last class that for this kind of G, we have uh, triangle theorem holding true, and thereby uh, since this function is continuous, the integral theorem holding true, and eventually the closed curve theorem holds true. Right? Correct. So if you follow that trail, what we get, we get. Tell me if you agree to this or not. A plus gamma rho G is equal to zero. Do you agree to this? Yeah. Yes, sir. Yeah. Okay. As let me write closed curve theorem is applicable. Okay, so uh, since in this case, uh, closed curve theorem is applicable, I get this one. Okay, now on this curve, so A plus gamma rho, you can clearly see alpha is not in this curve, A plus gamma rho. So therefore, on the curve, like on this A plus gamma rho, my function G is given by only the first part. The second part is not required. So I'm going to replace it. Okay, so hence what I get. I get that the integral of a plus gamma rho of the function f of z minus f of alpha divided by z minus alpha, this integral is zero. Okay. Great. And therefore, this tells me that the integral a plus gamma rho f of z divided by z minus alpha is nothing but f of alpha integral 1 upon z minus alpha a plus gamma rho. Agreed? Yeah. Yes, okay. So now uh, you see uh, we will be done. So we will be done if we can show integral over a plus gamma rho 1 upon z minus alpha is 2 pi i. Fine, do you agree to this? Yes, sir. we can do this one. Then we will get that we the f of alpha is 1 upon 2 pi i times this integral. Okay, fine. Now, here I would like to draw your attention to the following thing that we have seen something of this kind. For example, recall we have seen integral of 1 over z over let's say gamma 1 or let's say gamma rho. So, here the center is 0 and take gamma rho. This one, what was this integral? Two pi Sorry? 2 pi i. 2 pi i. So here center was 0 and of course my function is 1 upon z. So similarly, there will absolutely be absolutely no change. You can calculate by the definition of integral. Integral of a plus gamma rho 1 upon z minus a. What will be this? 2 pi i. 2 pi i. This will again be 2 pi i because your any z is, is of the form a plus, yeah, translation or any z as I said is of the form a plus uh, rho e power i theta, uh, theta between 0 to 2 pi. So if you substitute it there, you can use the formula f of uh, means, uh, means integral of f is nothing but f of gamma t gamma prime t. If you use that, you are going to get this integral is 2 pi i. But now, I have the problem that I have in hand is slightly different. Different here I had z minus a, and in our case we need to work with z minus alpha. Clear to all of you? Yes. Sir. Yeah. So there is a subtle difference over here, but nevertheless we will show that the, these two integrals are of course the same. That means we want to show that this is two pi i, so the integral must be the same. But now I have to 
change this z minus a to somehow z minus alpha. Okay, so that is what we have to do. So let us try doing that. Okay, so here my integrand is uh, uh, z minus a, whereas the one which I uh, wish to integrate is one minus one over z minus alpha. Fine. So let's do that. What we can do? Let's see. So write one by z minus alpha this guy as 1 by z minus a minus alpha minus a okay i can write like this and therefore if i for example take 1 by z minus a common what i get 1 by 1 minus alpha minus a divided by z minus a this is what i get so i can write like this great so now that i have this information notice one thing that if I take any point uh, on the curve A plus gamma rho, so therefore distance from for those points uh, means if you take any point like this, the distance with uh, means uh, if you take any point on the circle, the distance from the center is going to be rho. Okay, so note mod of A minus alpha, this guy is less than rho, that was by our choice here, that was by choice and for all z in a plus gamma rho, if you take any point from the curve, I get mod of z minus a is exactly equal to rho. So therefore, what I get is that this ratio, mod of alpha z minus a, this ratio is less than one in absolute value. Fine. Okay, so if something is less than one in absolute value and you have something of the form one minus uh, 1 divided by 1 minus z, then what do you do? Tell Finally, me. Like function. 1 minus x. Exactly. Or so minus 1. You, just, you are just going to uh, take the expansion of this. So, we can write. And moreover, not only this, I will say something more. We can write 1 upon alpha minus a divided by z minus a equal to 1 plus alpha minus a z minus a plus alpha minus a z minus a square plus alpha minus a z minus a cubed and so on so forth. So let me just write in terms of infinite series k from 0 to up to infinity alpha minus a divided by z minus a power k. Okay, let me write it like this. Now, notice this was so even in, if you think in terms of uh, power series, when you had 1 uh, divided by 1 minus z, uh, this function had this power series expansion 1 plus z plus z square plus z cube and so on and so forth. In the radius of convergence was 1 and inside uh, whenever wherever this power series converges, you remember that the convergence was uniform. Okay, This we had proved that the convergence of power series was like in general is uniform. So here, not only I can write this uh, expansion, but we can also write that uh, where the convergence of the of the sum on right hand side is uniform. Okay, so this we had seen that uh, this the uh, convergence is uniform on a plus gamma rho. So if I take no matter what point I take for uh, from this uh, curve, the convergence is going to be uniform. Is it clear to all of you what I am saying? Yes. Right. Yes. Now why did I say uh, talk about this uniform convergence? I talked about this uniform convergence for the following reason. When I told you about ML inequality, the next corollary immediately that I had proved was that if I have a sequence of functions which converges uniformly, then we had seen that the limit and the integral can be interchanged. Very good. So this is exactly what now I am going to work like that is what I'm going to use. So therefore, let's say what do I have? I have to integrate on a plus gamma rho. I have to integrate one over z minus alpha and this we wrote on a plus gamma rho 1 over z minus a times I have this sum k from 0 to up to infinity 
alpha minus a z minus a power k and this whole thing converges uniformly so therefore this is nothing but summation k from 0 to up to infinity integral over a plus gamma rho alpha minus a power k z minus a power k plus 1 do you all agree to this Yes, sir. Yes. Okay, great. So now, uh, as far as the integral is concerned, of course, the numerator is, is, is just a constant. Okay. So here, notice my k is starting from 0. So here, my k plus 1 is starting in the denominator. I have 1 and uh, then uh, minus 1, 2, 3, 4, and so on and so forth. Now, here, of course, you have not only calculated this, but you had also calculated like here in this case you had also calculated 1 upon z power m is 0 if m is bigger than 1 remember integer right? sorry yes sir. m is bigger than 1 right and similarly here it translates to this is equal to 0 if m is bigger than 1 agreed all of you integer and bigger than 1 yes, Agreed? Okay, so let us now come to this. Here, therefore, what do I have? What can I get? k from 0 to up to infinity, alpha minus a power k, and this integral a plus gamma rho, 1 upon z minus a to the power k plus 1. Tell me which integral is going to survive uh, among all these ones. So only the one which is going to survive is going to be k equal to 0, because for all other k's, I know I have already calculated this integral which was equal to 0. That translates to being this integral being equal to 0. And uh, therefore, tell me what do I get eventually? This is integral k equal to 0 means uh, alpha minus a. Integration 1 by z minus alpha. 1 by z minus a, not alpha. 1 by z. Uh, yes. So this is 2 pi i. And this is precisely what we wanted to prove. Correct? So is this clear to yes, you? Yeah. Why? Uh, first of all, why I needed this uniform convergence and how I uh, means I could ignore all the integrals uh, for k bigger than or equal to one. Is it clear to everybody? Yes, yeah. Sir. So it was yes, in, sir. In, in fact, if you are if you don't want to use this particular result, you can even say that if your k uh, m is like if, if you don't want to do calculate actually what is this integral and why it is zero you can just see here that each of these functions means whenever m is at least uh, uh, bigger than one so m is at least two so in, in each in these cases these functions have primitives right so uh, one upon z does not have a holomorphic primitive in a in, in a circle centered at uh, zero but here uh, these things have a primitive and therefore by uh, closed curve theorem this should means like whoever has a primitive you know integral should be zero so you can do it in that way otherwise also if you calculate nothing you are going to get the same thing okay so this completes the proof yeah so it's clear to everybody for the integral formula Okay, so great. Now that we have this fundamental theorem, Cauchy integral formula, I am going to do power series expansion of holomorphic functions. Expansion of holomorphic function. Okay, so that's what is the other thing I had told you about this particular statement long, long back, and this is something which I wish to prove now okay so we have all the uh, machineries and all the tools to complete the proof so let's see okay so here what i'm going to start with so let f uh, be a holomorphic function so uh, let h belongs to so did i define this notation h of u yes sir yeah set of all holomorphic functions on u right okay yeah. so let uh, f belongs to f is a holomorphic function on b a r then 
f has a power series expansion expansion of the form f of z equal to summation k bigger than or equal to zero a k z minus k whole power k okay so this is true for all z so for all z in b a r this is true for all z in b a r i can write my function uh, as a power series uh, in this uh, in this open ball okay so whenever i have a function which is holomorphic in any in, a, in any ball then uh, if you look at uh, like then uh, that particular function is going to be uh, having a power series expansion around uh, the center okay so of course uh, in place of b inside the ball b a r you can think of another point alpha and then around alpha also you will be able to write down a power series in r you will be able to uh, pack uh, some if you take some point alpha now b a r is an open set so around alpha you will get a uh, some delta neighborhood uh, which will be inside and in that delta neighborhood you will be able to write down power series expression uh, send uh, around alpha okay so whatever the center you wish to take if the function is holomorphic at at a point then by definition you know that there exists a neighborhood where the function is holomorphic or differentiable so then in that neighborhood you will be able to write down a power series expansion okay so here of course i'm going to tell you what are these aks are going to be but in general if uh, whenever you your function is given by uh, such a formula we have already seen that uh, uh, so clearly this power series uh, converges on this whole b a r so therefore uh, wherever the power series converges uh, it is infinitely differentiable we have seen all that so therefore you can even uh, say what are these a k's the a k's are going to be the k derivative of f at a divided by k factorial okay so those things you have already seen in uh, power series theory but now we are more interested to prove this okay so let's see uh, if i can uh, find out uh, these kind of a power series exp expansion okay fine uh, so what do i do i have to write such an expansion for all z in b a r okay so i am going to start with some point in b a r so let so that it becomes easier for you to apply so i am taking alpha from b a r and choose so i'm going to show that uh, around uh, like i i have a power series expansion around a in such a way that f of alpha can be given in terms of the power series like in the power series if you substitute alpha in place of z you are going to get f of alpha so that's that's the idea that we are going to do so you are going to choose again some uh, row positive such that mod of a minus alpha is less than rho less than r okay so the main reason why i have to keep choosing this row each time is because i know that my function is holomorphic on the open ball b a r so a priori i do not know how the function is going to behave on the boundary okay so that is the reason why uh, we are going to always choose such a row so that we are strictly inside the interior and uh, means we we can use the property of holomorphicity or continuity whatever is it given okay so to integrate okay so now once i have that we know so as i said my aim is to express f of alpha in terms of a power series like or like in, in a form looking like a power series centered at a so uh, we since we have to express f of alpha in that way we can use uh, cauchy integral formula from cauchy integral formula formula that f of alpha is equal to 1 upon 2 pi i integral a sorry yeah, a plus gamma rho f of z divided by z minus alpha so this is what i do uh, i know okay now whatever i have done i am going to do exactly the same thing okay so just notice this one uh, we know 
again 1 by z minus alpha what was this if you go back uh, if you go back in the proof of uh, Cauchy integral formula 1 upon z minus alpha was this guy right so this means I have uh, like it is 1 upon z minus a times this power this this infinite series okay so we know that this is k bigger than or equal to 0 alpha minus a power k divided by z minus a power k plus 1 agree this is what we have already seen okay for z in a plus gamma rho so if i take any point from uh, on on the circle of uh, radius rho centered at a we know that 1 upon z minus alpha looks like this and moreover the uh, in the summation the convergence is uniform and the convergence is uniform uniform okay so fine uh, all good so now uh, what i am going to do here i am going to therefore substitute my uh, expression in the above integral so we get so we get f of alpha is equal to 1 upon 2 pi i integral a plus gamma rho f of z i already have times k bigger than or equal to 0 uh, sorry alpha minus a power k z minus a power k plus 1 agree this is what i get fine Yes, sir. My substitute yes, sir. I'm going to get this one. So therefore, this is 1 upon 2 pi i. Now, uh, sorry, let me just write 1 upon 2 pi i later. So let me write it as we know uh, uh, uniform convergence of this infinite sum. So this is k bigger than or equal to 0, alpha minus a power k. Then I write 1 upon 2 pi i integral a plus gamma rho f of z divided by z minus a power k plus 1 okay can i write like this yeah so now yes call this ak okay so this is summation k bigger than or equal to 0 ak alpha minus a whole power k fine all of you agree to this so therefore what it turns out is that i can write uh, my f of alpha as a, in, in terms of uh, a power series around this okay now um, this is true for all all possible uh, I'll, like this the way i have done it this is true i can write it for all possible uh, z in bar okay but uh, of course you might ask me at one place that that this row that I had chosen, this row depends on alpha. So if you change alpha, the row might change and things like that. But uh, you remember whatever AK I am going to get, I am calling it an AK. But uh, uh, if if I see that I can write down such an ex expansion, then my AKs are actually uh, determined. I told you already from the power series theory itself. AKs are already determined. They are just the k derivative of f at a divided by k factorial. So, uh, therefore, really, I don't have to. Uh, I, I really don't have to bother about uh, showing that these AKs are independent of rho. Okay. So, uh, note that AKs are are independent of rho. Okay, so if, if in place of uh, one row, if you choose another row, which is bigger than this row and still another row prime, let's say, which is bigger than row and between uh, strictly less than R, you are still going to get the same uh, constant. Nothing is going to change. Okay, so because as I said, uh, we, we are going to have this expression. Okay, so uh, in fact, whatever the proof I have given, so uh, you, you can uh, give the same proof for all alpha uh, or for all z whose absolute value whose difference from a is strictly less than uh, rho the same proof will work and uh, so you are going to get that a k is independent of rho okay so 
uh, we see that uh, f of z is equal to summation a bigger, k bigger than or equal to 0 a k z minus a power k and a k is equal to as I said you write f uh, k the derivative at a divided by k factorial okay so this is what is your uh, a k and uh, this this one the choice is uh, unique so it doesn't matter whichever thing like whichever row you want to take okay so uh, this is what i get and in fact uh, you you get also this formula that uh, you told i told you what should be your ak ak is this integral uh, so you also get fk at a is 1 upon 2 pi i integral a plus gamma rho from z divided by z minus a power k plus 1 so that is what uh, it should be sorry there should be a k factorial this k factorial divided by 2 pi i integral from a plus gamma rho f of z divided by z minus a power k plus 1 so this row could be anything any any row which is uh, positive okay so uh, this is what we get okay and uh, this is often called generalized cost integral formula because this is true for all the higher derivatives also but here of course i am taking uh, the center not any alpha in case of uh, cauchy integral formula i had f of alpha here i have fk of a okay so is this is this clear whatever i have said the argument that i gave yes sir. yeah so we see that we have suitable constants so that f of z can be written as a k z minus a power k okay so as i said to, to begin with it might feel that it might look like that the constant might change if you change your point okay inside that open ball but that's not the case because as i said you hear whatever uh, expression i got so that holds for any other beta such that uh, mod of a minus beta is less than rho Whatever I have done, the same proof is going to work for any other beta for which mod of a minus beta is less than rho. So therefore, you see in this, uh, inside this ball a rho, I am getting f of z is equal to summation a k, uh, z minus a power k. And uh, therefore, uh, my a k's have a unique choice, which is going to be f, the k derivative of f at a divided by k factorial. Yeah, now, even if you change rho, how does it matter it's it's if, uh, effectively whatever is your integral it's going to give you uh, the k derivative of f at a divided by k factorial because that has to be the coefficient as i said coming from the power series theory itself okay clear yes sir yeah okay so now uh, just one uh, remark let me make so the remark is you see from this uh, thing here of course i started with a uh, function which is holomorphic in this ball and then I wrote down the power series expansion in that ball itself okay now if I let's say start with a function f which is holomorphic at u and uh, a belongs to u then uh, of course there exist uh, some r positive such that b a r is subset of u so uh, f will have a power series expansion expansion around a so around a means these the power series looks like z minus a power k okay that that is what it means to say power series around a so power series expansion around a uh, such yeah f will have a power series expansion around a on b a r okay so this is what we have proved right correct so uh, if i have an open set and i have a point uh, such that and there is a function which is holomorphic on that open set so then there exists some r positive uh, which so that the ball is inside open 
that u and then in that ball i will get power series expansion around t so that means what this intrinsic actually tells us that therefore the power series expansion around a is valid on the largest possible ball just possible ball centered at a inside u correct so this was what i showed it's true for any wherever my function is holomorphic like in whichever ball my function is holomorphic i will have power series expansion in that whole ball now if you choose if you have some random set random open set u let's say and you take any point in that open set then around that point the power series expansion is going to be valid in the largest possible disk where my uh, means like largest possible disk that i can fit inside uh, the open set u is it clear yes so for example what i am saying is that let's say i have this arbitrary sum open set u and i have a point a somewhere here okay so then of course my function is going to be holomorphic here let's say it means uh, I, I can fit in such a ball around a inside u the function will be holomorphic there and therefore the function will be having a power series expansion around a in this neighborhood but we can also have a bigger ball where the function is holomorphic means a bigger ball around a which is inside u and there also the function is going to be holomorphic and uh, the function is going to have a power series expansion and like this i can take bigger and bigger ball so i can think of the largest possible like the biggest possible ball inside which uh, means which is inside u and uh, therefore uh, i will be able to have power series expansion around that uh, means point in that biggest possible open ball is it clear what i am saying yes yes sir yes sir, yes, sir. yeah so uh, the point is wherever my i have let's say i have a ball and if the function is holomorphic there i'll get a power series expansion so that means if uh, means my power series will actually be valid in the largest possible ball which i can fit inside the uh, domain u so for instance so if f is an entire function so what does it mean what does it mean to say an entire function recall holomorphic on c that's right uh, it is an holomorphic function that is entire function that is holomorphic on c then around any point any point a any point a in c we have a power series expansion power series expansion f of z is equal to summation k bigger than or equal to zero a k z minus a power k for all z in c agreed yes sir yeah why is it like this here i am saying that the power series expansion is going to be true around like whatever power series expansion i have written around a that's going to be true for all z in c because you see since my function is an entire function so it's holomorphic on whole of c now around a i can fit in uh, open balls of any radius isn't it so that so doesn't matter whatever radius you choose your power series is going to be valid in that uh, uh, open ball around a so you can since you can take larger and larger uh, open like uh, open disk around a it doesn't really matter eventually you are going to get that the power series is valid for all z uh, in the whole of c clear yeah yes sir yes so uh, one uh, just so this is what we get uh, from this thing okay so uh, it's it's a very powerful uh, statement that we have that uh, any holomorphic function around any point 
is going to have a power series expansion okay so whatever small neighborhood is it means like it might be in a very small neighborhood doesn't matter but it will look like a power series nevertheless okay fine so now uh, let me just uh, define one noted notion or uh, a definition which often uh, many uh, book um, like many of the books use this this particular uh, definition or notion so then so i'm just going to define it so that you are aware of uh, this particular terminology as well okay so uh, let you subset c be open and uh, a function f from u to c is said to be analytic okay, so there is this definition of function or class of functions which are called analytic analytic if analytic on u if for any a in u there exists there exists uh, some uh, ball there exists uh, r positive such that b a r is subset of u and f has a power series expansion and f has a power series expansion around a on b a r on b a r okay so that is f of z looks like summation k bigger than or equal to zero a k z minus a power k for all z in b a r so uh, this is the definition of a function being uh, being analytic so we say that a function is going to be analytic in a neighbor in an in an open set u if no matter what point you choose you will always be able to uh, find a suitable uh, neighborhood around that point inside your domain where the function has a power series uh, expansion uh, uh, around uh, that point a okay so uh, of course if i have a function which is analytic so that means around any point it's given by a power series so uh, we have already seen that power series are uh, differentiable infinitely differentiable in fact and so on and so forth so uh, therefore uh, we get that any uh, analytic functions is going to be holomorphic and what we have just proved from that we get that any holomorphic function is analytic as well okay so uh, in complex analysis analytic functions on an open set these are same as like this is just the same this is same as holomorphic functions okay so these two notions uh, actually of course there is a difference but as far as uh, like when we think of uh, differentiability on c uh, we don't see any difference analytic functions are same as holomorphic functions okay and eventually this gives you that if you have a, a holomorphic function so uh, that that around any point it's going to be given by a power series so any holomorphic functions is going to be infinitely differentiable okay so uh, this is a very a spectacular property that you see in complex analysis that the moment your function is holomorphic at a point or like in a neighborhood of that point one it's, if it is differentiable it's going to be differentiable infinitely many times okay clearly these things are not true in r right so in r uh, you have seen functions which are one times continuously differentiable twice continuously differentiable and so on and so forth but here in complex analysis and i had told you in the very beginning that we are going to encounter some of the nicest features and some of the very special properties so for example we see that uh, holomorphic functions have power series expansion that gives you that any holomorphic function is going to be infinitely differentiable so we had defined holomorphic function by saying that the function should be differentiable in a neighborhood of a point then what we got is that no it's actually not only differentiable it's going to be infinitely differentiable okay so that is something we get and 
there is absolutely no difference between analytic functions and holomorphic functions. Okay, but uh, just uh, remember, uh, for example, this is not true everywhere. Okay, so one can define analytic uh, function in the same way that you will always have a power series expansion uh, uh, around the point. Okay, but uh, in general, uh, this is not true uh, everywhere in the sense, for example, if you take uh, fx equal to, so this is very standard. I think e power minus one over x, if x is positive, zero if x is less than or equal to zero, uh, then f is c infinity, but f does not have a power series expansion around zero. Okay as all the k derivative of f at a equal to 0 for all k bigger than or equal to 0. Okay. So all the derivatives are uh, equal to 0. So around 0, I cannot have a power series expansion because if I take the power series expansion, uh, it, it's, it's only going to be the 0 function, whereas the function is clearly non-zero. Okay, So around 0, I cannot have uh, any power series expansion. So whenever I'm, of course, talking about power series expansion, the power series expansion needs to be valid in a neighborhood. Okay, not at the point alone, but in a neighborhood around that point. Okay, so clearly in R, uh, when we think of functions which are even C infinity, there is a clear cut difference. Okay, so of course uh, we understand that analytic functions means they are going to be infinitely differentiable. So even if you start with dif infinitely differentiable function, you might get examples where uh, you don't have power series expansion. Okay, so uh, this is what is true that we see in this case. So in R, clearly there is a distinction between analytic functions and C infinity functions. But in C, uh, over complex numbers or like on open subsets of complex number, clearly these two notions are same. Okay, so is this clear to all of you? Yeah? Yes, sir. Uh, I have already mentioned that. Uh, so uh, another remark or corollary. Uh, any holomorphic. So what is C infinity? C infinity means infinitely differentiable. Right? Uh, C1 means uh, one time continuously differentiable. Like it is differentiable and the derivative is continuous. C2 means it's differentiable twice and F double dash is uh, continuous. So similarly C3, C4 and so on and so forth. C infinity means you can take, it means the function is infinitely differentiable. Okay. So why, okay. I, why I was giving this example of a C infinity function is because if at all I hope that a function uh, uh, will be analytic, then the function needs to be C infinity, right? We have seen any power series is infinitely differentiable, isn't it? So any power series which converges in a neighborhood posit with positive radius of convergence, it, it is generally infinitely differentiable. So therefore, the basic minimum requirement that you need to start with is a C infinity function. Of course, uh, for C1, C2, such kind of functions, like functions which are not more than uh, differentiable like let's say it's it's not twice differentiable or thrice differentiable there is no question of them being analytic anyway so we can forget that uh, so uh, to hope that a function will be analytic you at least require it to be c infinity and now uh, we are seeing that in r that's not happening like uh, we have c infinity functions which are not analytic okay. so uh, that is what we have mentioned and any holomorphic function on open subsets of C are analytic, are infinitely differentiable. So it's not only differentiable once, but it's infinitely differentiable. Just because we now know that it has a power series expansion. Okay, so it's going to be infinitely differentiable. Okay, so uh, now that I have this, I am going to uh, tell you uh, something, uh, a, a very uh, strong theorem, uh, which is called, which is the converse of the rectangle theorem. Okay, so uh, this is something which is very special. So let's see what the, what does the statement say. 
so uh, now that we understand kind of all these uh, phenomena we have this uh, very important theorem called Morera's theorem so what is Morera's theorem Morera's theorem is the following so uh, let u u be an open or let u subset c be open if from u to c be continuous suppose for any rectangle slash triangle r in u integral of f over gamma is equal to zero where gamma denotes the boundary boundary of r so uh, if i have this phenomenon then f belongs to holomorphic of u so uh, what i am saying here i am saying that suppose I have a continuous function for which the rectangle or the triangle theorem holds, then uh, the function is actually going to be holomorphic. Okay, so uh, this one is 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 very special. So initially, you saw we had uh, certain functions which we were dealing with. Those functions we were saying like g function, little g function that we had considered also today. Uh, for example, this one. Uh, the function g that i had defined here so we had seen that for these functions uh, the integral theorem holds uh, or sorry the rectangle theorem holds or the triangle theorem holds those kind of things we have seen and i was telling you that this function a priori is holomorphic everywhere except possibly at alpha but nevertheless it was continuous at alpha so now what we see is that uh, in fact uh, this function g was actually holomorphic okay so how do i prove this the proof is very easy okay so uh, since f satisfies uh, if you just follow the uh, implications i gave you f satisfies rectangle slash triangle theorem this is what is given this implies f has a primitive primitive so this is because f is continuous uh, we, we have f is continuous so this implies f as a primitive so that is uh, what that is there exists capital f from let's say u to c such that okay uh, capital f prime is equal to little f okay or uh, rather if I, I i need to work with some let's say some ball so let us work uh, in some ball okay so uh, let me do it the primitive that is primitive that is on any uh, ball in u we have a ball inside u we have uh, f prime defined on uh, f defined on that ball such that f prime is little f okay so uh, that that is what it means to say that f has a primitive and now what do i know f is a holomorphic function so it's it's, it's differentiable in in a ball and its derivative is going to be equal to f and at the moment f is a holomorphic function we know that it's going to be infinitely differentiable since f is infinitely differentiable we get f is differentiable on that on that ball and this ball is uh, this ball could be anything any any ball okay so therefore um, uh, this implies f is holomorphic on u okay so this is something which is uh, uh, very special so we will see that uh, uh, if i have this thing that 
uh, on every rectangle or triangle inside that open set if my function the integral is equal to zero uh, then uh, that um, and fun my function is continuous of course then only this is applicable then we will get that the function is holomorphic as well okay so is this clear yeah so if you if you have a function which is uh, continuous uh, and let's say you do not know uh, for example uh, holomorphicity at few points and but you know that the function is satisfying this uh, rectangle theorem or the triangle theorem in general we will be able to say that the function is going to be uh, holomorphic there okay yeah so uh, let me quickly write down a few corollaries and uh, like where this can be useful so for example okay just just wait a second you can see okay so uh, therefore as a corollary what i can write corollary is that uh, the function uh, uh, g that i had defined so uh, let f belongs to holomorphic on b a r and uh, define g is equal to for example i can take f of z minus f of a divided by z minus a uh, for uh, z not equal to a and f prime at a for z equal to a so if I have this, uh, then G is holomorphic on B A R. So this is what you get. And um, in fact, you can say that uh, this is something which I will not prove. Uh, you can try proving this. Okay. So uh, for example, uh, if uh, let U subset C be open. Uh, G uh, from U to C B such that G is continuous on U, but uh, uh, and holomorphic uh, everywhere except possibly. At finitely many points. Points, then G is actually holomorphic on you. Okay, so it's it's not possible. Like for example, what I'm saying over here, it's not possible that you have uh, a function which is let's say continuous everywhere else, differentiable almost everywhere else except for, for finitely many points I uh, means we can't find uh, these kind of functions okay so if a function is uh, having continuity everywhere else and having holomorphicity almost everywhere except for finitely many points then on those points also you will get holomorphicity okay so is the statement clear what I'm trying to say yes sir so you can effectively show that uh, your G is going to satisfy this uh, rectangle theorem or triangle theorem and then you can apply uh, Morada's theorem. Okay, so clearly again uh, this is uh, note remark. This is clearly not true uh, on R. So for example, let f of x equal to mod x so this is continuous on r differentiable on r minus zero right correct and yeah and clearly not differentiable on r and zero correct so you see 
so many uh, uh, important or significant differences that we are coming across. Clear? Yeah? Yes. Sir. Yes, sir. Great. So fine. Uh, now uh, let me also uh, make another important corollary of Morera's theorem. So I had told you in the beginning that, uh, for example, if you take uniform uh, a sequence of functions which are converging uniformly, then we had seen what we had seen that the integral and the uh, limit can be interchanged. Okay. So now we have a very interesting and very important uh, theorem here, which uh, is telling us the following. So the corollary. Let fn be a sequence. Or well, first let me write let u be an open set. Let u subset c be open. And fn from u to c be a sequence of holomorphic functions on u. Suppose fn converges to f uniformly on compact subsets. Of u, then f is holomorphic on u. Okay, so I get this spectacular theorem which says that if I have a sequence of holomorphic functions and it converges to some function which is uh, con the, where the convergence is uniform on compact subsets, then uh, compact subsets of u then what I'm saying is that f is going to be holomorphic on q. Okay, so uh, this is something which is which is a very special property and a lot of times you will see that we are just going to ensure uniform convergence on compact subsets and thereby we will deduce holomorphicity. Okay, so this is something which uh, one sees uh, very often and uh, the proof is uh, very simple. So for example, uh, I will also tell you where does this uniform convergence on compact subsets I'm using. Okay? That I will of course uh, uh, tell you. So uh, for example, if you have a function, so let's 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 take a rectangle. Okay, so let us take uh, some. So what we show is that so I need to show that uh, f is holomorphic on u. So if I want to apply Morera's theorem, what do I have to show? I have to show that. Uh, if I take any rectangle in U, then I will be able to say that the integral of F over that rectangle is going to be equal to zero, correct? Then F will be holomorphic, isn't it? Yeah. So uh, now what I am going to do is that let's say let's let's take I I have this uh, this is my U, okay, and I have uh, some rectangle over here or triangle, whatever you wish. Or let's say I have a triangle over here, whichever you like. Okay, so now of course it's given that if f converges uniformly on compact subsets, so uh, therefore the first thing that you can say is that when I have a sequence of holomorphic function, of course these holomorphic functions are continuous. We have already proved. So when you have a sequence of continuous function, what can you say if the limit, if you have a uniform limit? What can you say about that function? It is continuous. It's continuous, right? So we know that uniform limit of continuous functions are continuous. That's that's just from real analysis or I have already told you that as far as the continuities are concerned, there is absolutely no difference. OK, so it's just uh, you, you can think of functions uh, defined from R2 to R and things like that. So uh, it, there is absolutely no difference. So uniform convergence takes continuous functions to continuous functions. So whatever proof you have seen over R, the same proof works without any change. So here I have taken a sequence of continuous function and they converge uniformly on any compact subset. So its limit is also going to be continuous. 
So now, uh, if you think of f to be the limit function, then uh, if you integrate over any gamma, so what you can write, so now, now, uh, the integral of f over gamma, where gamma is the boundary of a rectangle or triangle. So this is uh, integral over gamma limit n tends to infinity f of n. And I know here that the convergence on compact subsets is uniform. And of course, here the triangles and the rectangles that I'm taking, all of them are compact subset. So therefore, I can interchange the limit and the integral, which we know is possible by uh, ML inequality and therefore and these integrals fns being holomorphic function I know that these integrals are equal to zero so limit n tends to infinity zero which is zero so this shows integral of f over gamma equal to zero for any rectangle any rectangle uh, on u and clearly Clearly, f is continuous on u uh, because uh, uh, f is uniform limit of a sequence of continuous function. So, by Morgan's theorem, as f is uniform limit of a, so you take any point, so that is a complex set. In that point, your sequence of function converges uniformly so there you get uh, uniform convergence so at that point also the function needs to be continuous so if is uniform limit of a continuous function okay so on compact subsets or not like uh, on any point so therefore uh, if is continuous at every point so therefore if is continuous at uh, on u so at any point so therefore if is continuous it is satisfying rectangle theorem or triangle theorem for any triangle slash rectangle theorem so this implies f belongs to h of u by modulus theorem okay so that's the modulus theorem for us that if uh, the uh, integral of a holomorph of a, of a continuous function if the integral over a rectangle or a triangle is equal to zero, then we will get that the function is holomorphic actually. Okay, so this is this is uh, very special. Okay, so is this clear to all of you? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Fine. So uh, let me just uh, prove a couple of uh, important, interesting results about holomorphic functions. So <coughs> I have so this one estimate that I'm going to now prove. So this is often useful uh, in estimating certain integrals. So this is called Cauchy estimate. So let me quickly do that. So what is Cauchy estimate? So uh, let f belongs to holomorphic B A R, a function which is holomorphic in a ball, and mod of f of z is uh, less than or equal to m okay, for all z in b a r suppose i have a uniform bound then i can actually bound the kth derivative also okay. so not only f i can bound the kth derivative at a so then the kth derivative at a in absolute value is less than or equal to k factorial m times uh, r power k Okay, so uh, the proof is one line. Uh, this follows from this follows from generalized Cauchy integral formula. Okay, so what was that? So the generalized Cauchy integral formula is as follows. So let zero less than rho less than r. Then we have seen. In, uh, in the proof of uh, a power series expansion, existence of power series expansion, we have seen that f k at a is equal to k factorial by 2 pi i integral over a plus gamma rho f of z by z minus a power k plus 1. 
this was the uh, thing and therefore by ml inequality f k at a is less than or equal to k factorial divided by 2 pi and uh, mod of f of z is bounded above by m so m and uh, the denominator mod of z minus a is equal to rho so this is rho power k plus 1 and uh, the length of the curve is 2 pi rho okay so therefore what i get this is k factorial m divided by 2 pi 2 pi gets cancelled rho gets cancelled rho power k okay so i get this is true like this so more the k derivative of f at k is less than or equal to k factorial m by rho power k uh, for all uh, for all k bigger than or equal to zero rho bigger low rho zero less than rho less than r so this is true for all k bigger than or equal to zero and for all rho between zero and r so clearly if it is true for rho it could be true for rho plus epsilon where rho plus epsilon is also less than r so uh, letting rho tending to r from below we get uh, whatever is uh, stated there if k derivative of f at a is less than or equal to k factorial m divided by r power k okay so you cannot directly uh, use the Cauchy integral formula with the radius r that is not allowed because we do not know whether the function is holomorphic at the radius r or not this i have already told you several times so that is the reason we were working with some rho which is strictly less than r and um, uh, we can uh, get the uh, desired inequality in terms of rho and then you can uh, tend rho to r okay from below so then you will get exactly the inequality that you wish for okay so that's called the Cauchy estimate now why did i uh, ask you about like why did i prove this Cauchy estimate because i want to end by proving one uh, very fundamental theorem or very popular theorem which is called Liouville's theorem okay so i'll stop by proving this Liouville's theorem so what is Liouville's theorem so this is a very uh, means common statement and you see lot of applications of this uh, even in competitive exams uh, you will see lot of questions which can be uh, proved using Liouville's theorem so it says that a bounded entire function is constant so therefore that means what if i take any function which is any non-constant entire function it must be unbounded uh, in other words in other words any non-constant entire function is unbounded okay so for example these kind of questions <laughs> one encounters uh, very naturally is that like for example you consider sin x so this function fx equal to sin x for x in r what can i say about this function this is c infinity function this has power series expansion in fact but what do i know about this function tell me bounded for all x in r but now if you consider the sin z function which was we defined again in terms of power series this time j is in c we have seen that that's an entire function and all that so what can i say about this function now if i take z to be complex bounded. this is this is no longer bounded okay so do not make these mistakes that the comp just because the real sign is bounded uh, that does not mean the complex sign has to be bounded in fact it's not bounded because it's an entire function okay so uh, let me quickly give a give you a proof of uh, Liouville's theorem uh, by uh, using this Cauchy estimate okay so i am going to uh, start out by saying that a function a holomorphic an entire function which is bounded then i'm going to show that it's going to be constant right that's the statement first statement that i wrote i'm going to prove it in that form okay so let some to start with some complex number a now we know that it, it, it's an entire function so we know f belongs to uh, holomorphic h b a r 
for all r positive so no matter what r i choose i'll always get f to be holomorphic in such bonds as f is entire okay since i have this i am going to get uh, this kind of thing that f is holomorphic on these balls okay so now uh, uh, i have told you that wherever function is holomorphic in whichever ball i have holomorphicity in that ball i am going to get power series expansion okay so on any on any uh, ball b a r for any r positive f has an expansion of the form f of z equal to summation k bigger than or equal to zero i am directly i am not writing a k anymore i am directly writing whatever i am supposed to get the k k derivative of f at a divided by k factorial z minus a divided by k okay so this is what is the uh, expansion okay so now what i am going to do is that i am going to show so i want to show what i want to show f is constant so here this is the power series expansion i am going to show except for k equal to zero term all other terms are zero okay so we show f k at a divided by k factorial this guy or uh, even f k at a is equal to zero for all k bigger than or equal to one okay so if i get this then will you agree that uh, we get uh, that the function is a constant function yes sir. yeah okay so yes, now sir. now notice by cauchy by uh, cauchy estimate what do i get so uh, since f is bounded uh, say mod of f of z is less than or equal to m for all z in c we get by Cauchy estimate. What do I get? Tell me. By Cauchy estimate, what was Cauchy estimate? That the kth derivative f of f at a is uh, bounded above by this quantity. So this implies the kth derivative of f at a divided by k factorial. Let us take this one is less than or equal to m divided by r power k. Do we all agree to this? For all uh, r yes. positive and k bigger than or equal to one. So I have this estimation for all r positive and k bigger than or equal to one. And therefore, what can I get now? Tell me. From this, what do I get? Yeah. This is true for all r positive. And we made as small as possible. Yeah, so and k is uh, any k is just k is bigger than or equal to 1. So you see, so letting r tending to infinity, what do we get? We must we get that the k derivative of f at a divided by k factorial must be equal to 0, right? Because if this can't be a non zero number, if it's non zero, then I know that the right hand side is going to go to 0. Okay, clear. Yes, yes or no? So, yes, uh, yes. so this is equal to this. So therefore, f of z is equal to f of a. Uh, so no matter what z you take, whatever ball you take, whatever things you want to take. So f of z is equal to f of a for all z in C. This implies f is constant. Fine, is this clear? The proof is clear to all of you? Yes, sir. I just use Cauchy estimate. Yeah. Uh, in Cauchy estimate, we had seen that uh, I had this information that if the function is holomorphic in the ball B A R, then I have this estimate. Now I have started with a and M was the bound. Now I have started with a bounded entire function. Entire function means I can take my R to be anything. Like uh, I can take R as big as I wish. And I am saying that my function is bounded. So clearly, this is a place where I, we can directly apply uh, this Cauchy estimate, and we get that the uh, coefficient of z minus a power k is nothing but zero. 
and of course here i had to use of course this estimate is true for k bigger than or equal to 0 as well but uh, we really needed to use it for k bigger than or equal to 1 because then only this quantity is going to go to 0 okay so except for k uh, equal to 0 all other terms in this power series they are 0 and k equal to 0 term is nothing but f of is just f of a so therefore i get f of z is equal to f of a okay so uh, we get that our function is going to be a constant function clear all of you is it clear yes sir. yeah okay fine so uh, we have uh, done certain things today i'm going to stop here we are not going to discuss any further for today let me stop the recording as well okay so are there any questions yeah are there any questions from here, whatever we have done so far? Hmm? Okay, so if not, uh, go through these uh, properties very carefully because uh, these are certain important concepts related to, uh, you know, this uh, 